Well, you can see riot police standing by even now in Berkeley, in California, where conservative author Ann Coulter was supposed to give a speech today. And if you want proof that America is hurtling toward real division over ideas and culture, look no further than what you're looking at right now. Left-wing students and activists made it perfectly clear they're incapable of coexisting with alternative views. Remember when Milo Yiannopoulos tried to visit in February, and this happened. Well, this week, Ann Coulter was forced to cancel a speech because the school would not provide a venue or a time, and it was just too unsafe. And you can tell it's not an exaggeration from looking at those pictures. As you can see right now, despite the cancellation, hundreds of people have taken to the streets anyway. Riot police are out in force to keep the situation under control. This is pretty crazy. Ann Coulter is in San Francisco right now, and she joins us live. Um, Ann, just to clarify for us, there's been a lot written about this. Why were you not able to speak at Berkeley? Well, they changed, you know, the rules every 10 minutes. Um, I kept agreeing to all of their conditions. They were hoping I would cancel. Um, but no matter how, you know, I had to give it from a hot air balloon <laughs> at 3 in the morning. And I kept saying, OK, OK, whatever you want. Um, and then they just up and canceled it. And then they randomly rescheduled it. Um, and then my allies turned tail and ran at the last minute when I think we were about to achieve total victory. Um, and so, so it was a, I didn't my have, understanding is I didn't the, have any sponsors. I didn't have Berkeley. Right. So your sponsors, the <laughs> people Berkeley who Berkeley canceled. Right. My sponsors acquiesced. But is it fair to say, bottom line, that the threat of violence is what prevented you from speaking? Well, that's what Berkeley claimed, of course, you know, <laughs> there are way, ways of dealing with violence. That's why we have a police force. That insane press conference that, that um, Berkeley administrators and uh, Captain Alex Yao, I think his name was, with the Berkeley police last week, where I, I, the, the police captain's argument was, we can't have Ann Coulter. There's going to be violence. Well, I don't know. Call a cop. What's your job? <laughs> it's like you're on a plane that's about to take off, and the pilot says, "How am I supposed to get this thing across the country?" <laughs> well, exactly. That's your job. Well, the whole point um, of the having people with guns to is to protect down. your right to say what you think. And <laughs> so, what would you what would you have said? I mean, I guess it's too late now, but you, you've got a you've got a venue right here. What would you have said had you been allowed to speak? Yes. Well, you're getting it exclusively, so that the thugs do not win. Um, well, my seditious and, and hateful speech, the, the theme of it was going to be, obviously, it was going to be a searingly brilliant speech on immigration, um, but the main point of which was federal written law on the books about immigration developed over generations by both Democrats and Republicans should be enforced. Huh. That was it? Well, that was the overall theme. Yes, those laws. <laughs> no, I mean, of course, I, ag I agree with them. you. I agree with you emphatically. <laughs> but you weren't going to call for war, or violence, or anything like that. You were just going to say existing laws ought to be enforced, and that was considered ought too to radical. Ought to be enforced. Yes, and I'm. You know, I might have a little. I mean, it's, it's topical to this week. I started um, a tweet today that I'll be sending out every morning as we watch the progress. Um, the the border wall update: number of miles built today, zero. Number of miles built since Trump's inauguration, zero. Look for the next next update tomorrow. I, I mean, I, I'm a, a little annoyed. This was th the campaign promise that shook up the political world. You would think if you were someone like Paul Ryan, after spending the entire Trump campaign trying to undermine Trump and still to have him elected and be elected in a pretty stunning victory, winning Wisconsin, 
Paul Ryan's home state, something Republicans haven't won for 20 years, including when, haha, Paul Ryan from Wisconsin was on the ticket. You'd think the day after, after November 8th, so November 9th, Paul Ryan wakes up and thinks, I don't think I'll go for my four hour weightlifting routine today. I think I'll start working on the signature promise that just won Donald Trump the election and not wait until April 27th to say to, to the president of the United States, you know, we're going to have to dr drop funding for the wall um, because we don't want a government shutdown. When, of course, as I wrote in my column this week, they're not funding a wall to avoid a government shutdown. Not having a wall is the definition of a government shutdown. The, the basic <laughs> purpose of government is to keep us safe. If we can't protect our borders, I'd say that's a government shutdown. Yeah, it does seem like a pretty, pretty basic function of government and culture. You always have a place to talk here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.